Hi, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, so this morning it's, it's about the, the question and answer uh, regarding the last uh, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, you are not your pain, so on that topic. But before, I would like to just say that I'm really excited about the uh, whole this program on Facebook Live and um, since uh, last um, Facebook Live uh, two days ago we have uh, 10,000 views uh, and so many uh, beautiful comments and um, and also a lot of people uh, sh sharing their experiences and so the nice thing about it is recorded afterward and the people are able to uh, practice with it and even though meditation was short we all agree but um, people were saying that um, actually able to uh, separate oneself uh, from one's pain not identify with the pain see oneself higher and uh, more clearer than identifying with the pain and then meditation already helped and sometimes people are saying that have decreased or release or their pain has actually disappeared uh, comments like that it's a uh, fantastic and so um, I truly uh, uh, believe in it I have my own experiences with it working with the pain and we have also done some good researches that how these practices actually help to overcome pain so so this is very very exciting and i wanted to thank thank all of you uh, making your comments and sharing your experiences so thank you and also that uh, um, uh, karma yolmo uh, very nice uh, message we got from nepal karma yolmo uh, who have said that they have rented a, a small a place with a good internet so they could continuously watch all these uh, Facebook live teachings and that also made me very happy to see really like uh, around the world people are taking it uh, seriously you know feeling this is something they would like to continuously follow so I am very very excited about all this thank you um, so the first question here is about fear of losing what I love in the meditation. This is a question from Maria Quintana. Um, at first I felt fear of losing what I love from most of meditation. Of meditation, I was thinking about work and then finally I felt space and felt that I cannot really lose what I love. So basically, um, so Maria's experiences of of um, fear first, and then when you truly experience uh, the awareness of the space, then feeling completely okay that I will not lose what I love, because I will not lose myself and that because there is no way that I can lose myself there's no way to lose oneself so so that is a, um, um, just to I think just some sense of not much to answer or anything like that I think generally uh, in our in the tradition uh, it says we say a fear of emptiness uh, or uh, so a fear of space, a fear of losing ego when you're identifying with the ego and when you have feel that awareness of the space might actually transcend or, uh, or liberate that uh, identity, then they, clearly there is a fear. So there is fear related with the deeper meditation and meditation of space and emptiness, clearly understood traditionally but at the same time what really genuine sense of what what we call confidence we in Tibetan we say ding 
and particularly we talk about tavi ding like uh, the the confidence certainty of view tavi ding so to have tavi ding or to have that certainty of view also it's because of space because when you are truly aware of the space then you begin to have the inner confidence that you are not going to lose anything um you know you will not lose anything you are not going to lose what you love so uh, so i think and that is somehow maria's i guess maria's experience here and probably we all will have similar experiences here so we will not lose um what we love and uh, we will, because we are not going to lose ourselves uh, and in the uh, dzogchen tradition meditation sometimes it says that human beings particularly in the west you you're searching for yourself so much every effort you're putting so you're putting so much effort to search yourself and expecting to find yourself it says you will never find yourself because you have never lost yourself so it's more question about realizing what you haven't lost realizing what you have realizing who you are is not about finding something who you are not and that is where our all effort of identifying with our conditions and our pain uh, we we uh, we lose those things but we never lose ourselves the second question here is uh uh part of meditation so it's not really i don't know if it's a really a question um uh, so the jean ore um who uh, our sangha member from france so um so question is going to the center of oneself so of course during uh, any process of meditation i think uh, always there are some uh, simple uh, rules i guess and that you really need to go more to the center of yourself you really need to go more connectedness that that's exactly the reason why i always guide meditation through three precious pills trying to uh trying to be aware of the stillness of the body that's how you are trying to center yourself trying to be aware of the silence of the speech that's how you're trying to center yourself and uh, trying to be aware of the spaciousness or the openness of your heart that's how you're trying to center yourself it's very important in the beginning to center yourself connect feel that connectedness in yourself and then once you feel the connected in yourself and then you have a chances to experience a deeper stillness the stillness of being you have a chances to experience a deeper silence the silence of your being the silence which is not dependent on absence of noises absence of people absence of event silence which who you are you are discovering realizing that silence and then the the experiences of the inner spaciousness the inner openness of your mind your heart so so it's it's very important to in the beginning to ground yourself to center yourself once you are in that centered place it basically you are changing you have changed your glasses like glasses then now you are you are wearing a very good a glass of wisdom glasses and through that wisdom glasses you are looking at something that uh, at um, your pain for example this case and that very moment when you when you have changed the sense of yourself the sense self perception a, self, a sense of your feeling of yourself sense of your who you are and you are looking through that a new place with new eyes a uh, wisdom eyes you see completely a different reality you see completely different pain and so the pain that you don't identify with identify with that means you are not grasping it and when you don't grasp it when you don't hold on it 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 easier it to breathe it's easier to it to clear release we call self self liberation 
Uh, self notion of self liberation is when something is able to clear by itself when you are not grasping you are not holding and that's what that's how the self liberation is taking place and <clears throat> and that's why actually the healing is taking place so so um so we are we call hosting uh, you're looking at the situations differently so, so the question number 3 uh, who are we if we are not uh, our body, if we are not our ego, we, if we are not our pen, then uh, basically who are we? So who are we? Well, that's a very, very good question. So uh, uh, I will not go so much into it in, during this session because uh, uh, our next session, it's uh, an introduction to your eternal body. So, an introduction to your eternal body, January 31st, Thursday, 10 a.m. New York time. So, this is our next session a discussion about it. Who are we? So, uh, who are we? It's in a sense our eternal body, uh, our uh, pure body, our body of light, our uh, true sense who we are. And so, that is something we will... Uh, continuously discussed. So I think in, in a way um, the who we are, I think it's a very very important question for sure. It's just probably the most important question in every spiritual path, every spiritual tradition as far as I am aware of. The, the most important question, who are we? Who are? Who am I? And um, it's very helpful at least uh, to begin to think about and begin to self-reflect, begin to have some glimpse of experiences of who we are not first, because we we are we are experiencing ourselves all the time throughout the day, 24 hour, including in our dream and sleep. We are experiencing uh, somebody who I, who we are not. So we are in a way we are suffering for no no reasons. We are producing conflict for no reasons, uh, and um, uh, we are kind of working for someone who think who you think you are, which who you are not. That means we are kind of wasting so much time, energy, and effort, uh, biological energy and effort, and that's why we drain so much ourselves. Uh, we, uh, yeah, energetically we drain so much. It's like um, I always give an example of phone. If you, in the phone, you know you have 50% is left, battery life, and you have 10% left, and when you see you have only like less than 50%, we know immediately we wanted to charge it. We're trying to look for the power source. And, uh, and we know also we're trying to protect ourselves, not trying to maybe play videos, not trying to uh, do use uh, um, navigation system. And uh, looking for navigation system is exactly a very good example. You are always uh, uh, searching in search mood. You are looking for destination. Um, and uh, when our, as a human, our navigation system in ourself is on all the time. And when, and the, the, the what dry, drains us the most is our navigation system in us, a searching for self, a searching for self, searching for myself. So, so uh, until you stop searching for yourself, you will not find yourself. So, so until you stop searching for yourself, you will not even able to uh, protect the energy or you will not able to retrieve energy or you will not able to uh, 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 I say, uh, uh, collect energy because you keep losing your energy. So the search mood of yourself needed to, to shut down. Maybe you don't have to shut down forever, but at least moment to moment it needed to be shut down through three precious pills, through your bodies and through your speech and through your mind. So that's, that is, I think it's very important. So we will uh, question number three, who we are, we will discuss next session. But I want everybody to reflect a little bit, just who you are not 
and how much you engage with who you are not, like identifying with your pain we discussed already. Number four. So, question number four. During meditation, pain intensifies, then I feel the space, how I can stay there longer. So, uh, so of course, I know your question is, uh, during, during the meditation, uh, the pain is inter intensifying, so it, it happens. Whenever you bring attention to yourself, whenever you bring attention to your body, whenever you attention to bring your energy centers like chakras, korlos, whenever you bring attention to a particular part of your body, you people sometimes they don't feel anything, it's dead. Or sometimes people feel numb. Or sometimes people feel pain. But at least even you are feeling numb, you are feeling pain, you are feeling something. And, and maybe you feel the pain is intensifying for a short moment because you are, it's not the pain is intensifying, you are aware of your pain. And uh, so once you are aware of pain, your pain and you don't identify with that, you are able to feel more your space, you are able to feel more your silence, you are able to feel more your warmth, there, in that very moment, you are feeling more release, you are feeling more healing. You are actually, I'm literally, you are able to overcome the physical pain. I was having just conversation with a friend of mine who said, oh yeah, I understand that, you know, when it comes to mental pain, emotional pain, that makes sense, meditation might help. But when it comes to physical pain, that is difficult because it's a real pain. It's not a mental pain. So I, you know, I was funny to hear that. I did not, of course, agree with that. So there is nothing, as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing such such thing, because whatever uh, pain you have created uh, in the body, it also has so much to do with your mind. Whatever emotion pain you are feeling, that also has so much to do with your mind. So your mind is so much responsible of every pain that you experience. So. But I know how many, how, as, as I'm a leader, I want all of you who are listening this moment here, I want, please tell me how many of you have been actually working on your physical pain with this meditation or the previous meditations, and uh, how actually uh, clearing pain, how actually it's decreasing pain, how actually you are able to cope better with the pain. I want your feedback. So your feedback will be inspiration for others to to see it's not just the mind, but actual the pain is decreasing way you relate, where you are your when you're changing your relation to your pain. Actually physical pain is there is a shift in physical pain. I want you to share with other people so that I think it will be inspiring for other people. And uh, our final question is, uh, so we, how, basically how uh, does the consciousness can heal? So why why only consciousness can heal? So why the healing with with only consciousness? So why only he, consciousness can heal? So so that is a very good question, um, and uh, I think uh, so why so why can't I heal only with consciousness? So this is the question here. Um, so first of all, I think it's very important to define what consciousness means to you because. Uh, I hear so many different people talking about consciousness in so many different ways, and it's it's absolutely confusing for me sometimes when people talk about consciousness. So, um, so where I look at it, consciousness, at least in from uh, my view, from a view of great perfection, the Dzogchen view. Uh, the consciousness sometimes we translate as a mind. Mind or consciousness is the same. 
I use term called innate awareness uh, or primordial innate awareness. Um, Rang Rik Yishe, Rang Rik Yishe, or Rikpa. So, so just your mind or just your consciousness cannot heal, for example, for ego, for example. So in the one way you look at, your ego is also consciousness. Ego is a state of mind. Ego is a state of consciousness. Ego, so ego is consciousness. But ego is not innate awareness. Ego is not a pure awareness. Ego is not awareness which is beyond duality. And uh, so not just the mind can heal, not just uh, consciousness can heal, but that consciousness or that mind has to be innate, pure awareness, which is beyond personality, beyond duality, and beyond conceptual mind, beyond ego. And that mind can heal. So I think in a way is a, the answer is pretty simple. Um, uh, so yeah, so not any mind can heal. It has to be very, very specific. For example, when we do meditation, what we are trying to do when I say, bring your attention to your body, stillness, bring attention to your mind, uh, uh, how you say the speech, the silence, bringing your attention to your uh, mind, the spaciousness. When I say that, what I'm trying to do is you are just your ordinary consciousness, your mind or your ego is trying to rest, trying to let it rest, trying to let it um, take a break and trying to it to connect with your body. And so moment that mind rest in that stillness, the body rest in stillness, the, the awareness in the body rest in that stillness, awareness in the speech rest in that silence, awareness in the mind rest in that spaciousness. When your consciousness, when your mind fully rest in that stillness, silence, spaciousness, then, for example, particularly silence, when you are completely resting in that silence, that means no conceptual mind is active. That very moment, awareness arises like a sun shines. When there's no clouds, sun shines. So awareness arises in that silence, in that stillness, in that spaciousness. That awareness is the he healing, uh, healing mind, but not just the consciousness, okay? So, so that's how uh, we understand. Um, so I think uh, so basically I have uh, answered uh, five main questions here. So I would like to uh, guide a short meditation. So, and during, uh, after short meditation, I also want all of you to give me feedback and um, um, it was very nice to hear uh, one comment yesterday saying, I, you know, uh, during the meditation, pain completely disappeared. So uh, when pain completely disappeared, uh, it's, it, it's a physical pain we are talking about completely disappear. So those experiences are really like, a, uh, it's a beautiful to have one for yourself. And also it's a beautiful to share experiences with somebody else because there are a lot of people who, who think, oh, it's pain, I really need to take pill. With just meditation, it's impossible, and it will encouraging, inspiring to those people. So I encourage to share your experiences. And for now, let's just sit for a moment comfortably. So just for a moment, stop typing, making comments. If you want, you can close your eye.
feel all the supports, the lineage, enlightened beings, teachers, the blessing of the Cyber Sangha, the connectedness here, feeling we are supporting each other this very moment. I'm sending my support to you, all of you. I'm sending my prayers, my blessings. I'm also feeling all of your presence. This very moment, we have like 200 and over 280 people meditating together. Just feel our awareness has no limit of time, space. Better than any internet connections. We are all connected, just be aware. Bring your full attention to your body. Be aware of the stillness from the sole of the feet till the crown. Feel that connection to your body. Let your body completely rest in that silence. And when you're doing that, feel that this sense of deep drops, like a, like an effort, drops of effort, drops of holding. And resting deeper, 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 and gradually experiencing their inner, Stillness, the stillness of your being. Breathe deep, nor hold your breath, any discomfort. Breathe it out through exhalation, end of exhalation. Rest deeper in that inner stillness. Be aware of the silence. Feel the silence. Hear the silence. Listen the silence. Let your speech, let your old efforts, your speech, let it rest. Rest deeper, deeper, deeper in that silence.
Be aware of the spaciousness of your heart, your mind. Just feel like a crystal clear blue sky. You are that crystal clear blue sky. You are that sacred space. As you aware of the inner stillness in your body, inner silence in your speech, inner spaciousness in your mind, just gradually be aware of your pain. Either it's physical, emotional, whatever most intense pain that you are experiencing this moment in your life, that pain is not an obstacle. That pain is your door to that inner refuge. That pain is eye-opening for you. That pain is like a message for you to awake. That pain is support for you to discover the truth. Just be aware of that pain, not judging, not suppressing. Just being aware of it as it is, as you are experiencing. At the same time, be aware of that stillness, that spaciousness, that silence. I call it, give a spacious, luminous, warm hug. Spacious, luminous, warm hug. Give a spacious, luminous, warm hug. Why spaciousness? Because through body, through the stillness, we feel so much space, the emptiness. Why luminous? We feel so much aware. There is awareness. There is connectedness. Warmth. In the union of that space and awareness, naturally warmth arise and the warmth is the medicine the healing quality of that pain so basically as an image we are saying give it, give the spacious luminous warm hug you would give that to anybody but experientially being completely open without judgmental being completely aware with the connection, being completely accommodating in that warmth of bliss. That's what experientially means. But as an image, it's like a giving hug. Those, those you, it, it's helpful, then think about that. Spacious, luminous, warm hug. And allow it to heal.
Okay. You can open your eye. Now, for a moment, uh, I would love if all of you can share your experience now. Now, this is the time you can, uh, uh, any feedback, any comments, uh, any experiences, and particularly uh, if you, if some yesterday, as somebody said, you know, feeling the pain was more intense than as as I feel the more space awareness and warmth, the pain went down or disappeared, and how I can stay longer. The questions are like that. It's a very beautiful questions. So uh, you're welcome to ask some questions also, if you uh, want, and uh, the feedback will be. Uh, very welcome. So I hope this this meditation was uh, helpful and it was very good. And and this is a as a very simple meditation. But uh, I I would encourage you any of you, particularly those you really have like a. a pain, either physical or emotional pain, I would strongly recommend on uh, practicing this at least like a, what we call informally, like five times a day, five times a day informally, and particularly in really like a, uh, five times a day, the times where actually you produce more. For example, you might be waiting for the bus or waiting for the um, uh, aeroplane or uh, waiting for someone in a, in a, wherever you're waiting. Imagine during those moments when you're waiting, what are you doing? Just be aware. Usually you're not conscious. What you're doing, it's probably you are getting trapped into that pain. Like just for example, I hate this pain. I hate this pain. I hate my pain in my knee. I hate this uh, pain in my chest. I hate this pain uh, in my mind. So basically, first you have a pain in your knee, and then you hate that pain, and and then you are not conscious of that you hate that pain, and then you are not aware at all that hating your pain in your knee will elaborate, ex, 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 how you say, uh, in, increase more pain, and not only in your knee, but also in your other part of your body, in you, it will increase. You are, you are not conscious at all that moment. Maybe you are spending 15 minutes totally unaware, totally unconscious, complaining, criticizing, kind of uh, um, judging your pain like that. And, and, and what are you doing? You are producing more pain. It will get worse. So those are the moment. And uh, sometimes people say, "Oh, I don't have more time." You know, I please. I'm very, very busy in my time. I don't have a time to meditate. I don't have time to do the practices. Okay, well, I don't agree with you, but I accept you. But when you you have a time to unconscious criticism, judging your pain for 15 minutes, be aware and use those times. So instead of you you're losing your biological energies, you are regaining the strength and you are healing your pain. So use those time. You don't need extra time. Use the time which you are misusing them or using negatively them. So use those times. I hope that makes sense to you. So... Um, so I think that's for that's for all now. And uh, as you all know, that uh, next um, uh, an introduction to your eternal body. So uh, if you are not your pain, then who you are. This is what we are going to talk next uh, 
uh, Thursday, January 31st, 10 a.m. Uh, New York, no, sorry, the 10 a.m. my time here in California, so 1 o'clock, so this is, I think I announced it uh, wrong before also, so 1 o'clock New York time. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you everybody.